Welcome to the Fintech Scaly Show. This podcast is sponsored by ScaleUp Consulting, helping fintech startups accelerate customer acquisition and set up business operations to scale systematically. When you're ready to grow, reach out to us at richard at scaleupconsulting.co. Now, over to the show with Richard Doty, founder and host. Hey, what's up, everyone? Today on the show, we have Fabian Fisher, founder of MassUp. Hey, Fabian, great to have you on the show. How are things going in uh, Germany today? Well, very hot, but very well. And thanks for having me. And um, hello to you and to your listeners. Cool. I really, really appreciate you taking the time. Let's kick off the show by you telling us a bit about yourself. Well, like you said, I'm a founder of MassUp. I'm over 20 years in digital business, especially insurance business. Everybody likes that business, but I found it exciting for the last 20 years working with many companies like Zurich, Allianz, and many other big shots. And uh, a few years ago, we saw the time is right company, insurance company. We call it today uh, InsurTech, but the original idea was simply to deliver a solution to the market that was missing. So that's where MassUp was born roughly four years ago. Cool. And I mean, let's take a, a couple of steps back and just maybe get a bit of background about you. I know you started out a number of years ago. You've also launched successful companies over the last 15 years. But what prompted you to set off on your own in the beginning? What made you, you know, jump over the fence and say, listen, I want to be a founder. It'd be interesting to find yeah, out. Yeah, well, that's maybe a long time ago. I think the first company I founded in was 18. It went down a year later, so it was not a big topic. But I really liked always to do some own stuff and try to new things and develop it. And roughly in end of the 90s, I started with digital business and hired into a new company at that time that was totally in the new economy times of that. And since that time, I'm working digital and the agency called Media Men grew over the time. I got a partner of this company. I was a managing director for a long time and had a deep look and a deep development from the time where we used CD-ROMs up to now developing the whole digital processes. And insurance was a big part of it. Like I said, we worked for the first digital systems of Zurich in Germany, for example. So we developed it really from the basic on. And the agency is always a good hub spot for people who want to work independently. So it always helped me to do new things, to be on an entrepreneurial side. And uh, so we did that for the last 20 years and we founded a company in China. What was a big adventure back in 2006, uh, we founded other startups. So it was always a very adventurous ride and still always the hunger to try something new. And so that's what we did with Massa again, like that. Uh, we said, okay, we did so much with the agency, but I wanted to start it all over and make it up again make it small and then grow it up again with our own business. So that's, that was drive us uh, to mess up again. Oh, interesting background then. I mean, you mentioned the agency, Media Man. And, uh, how has that venture helped you? How has that experience helped you with mess up? Well, first of all, it's a uh, company that is, uh, has very digital roots. It was a digital agency from the beginning. So we had a breed of people around us, a lot of talented, who always tried to develop something that was new in every stage of, of the development of the new era, what is called at that time. So that was a anyhow a good surrounding to start something and to think always new and to redefine you every year. No, I think no year in the last 20 years was the same. It was always something new coming up in these areas. So it was a steady entrepreneurial innovation drive force in that agency. So that helped a lot. And for sure, the founders of the agency were built in the 90s and now partners with me, the InsurTech Hub, are a great team to work together and to develop new ideas. So it's a bunch of entrepreneurial-minded people that are open to start something new again and not always try to do the same and just to do it a bit better, but to start new ways, new ventures. So this kind of hub helped a lot. And for sure, it's a group of over 100 people many developers, uh, UX guys, etc. There's a lot of experience and knowledge what gives us an advantage in our business because we can use these talent, we can scale if we want, and we have it on the international. Like I said, we're in Germany, we are in Shanghai, China, we are as well in Boston, US, so we have all big time zones and can use these very global talent as well. It helps in many ways. Right, and it sounds like obviously you've got a very interesting and diverse network and team around you. And you know, correct me if I'm wrong, the idea of MassUp was born out of this network and this team? Is that 
Yes, correct. So we tried at one point or decided at one point that we, besides the service business, wanted to start our own products. There was a fintech that we started in Shanghai with the colleagues over there, uh, Liquis, for micro credit for blockchain platform that was totally new at that time. And Massab was very clearly a pass because we did insurance a lot. I did especially the insurance processes in the agency. So it was very clear path. We said, hey, we know so much about these topics. So, you know, obviously, uh, mass up is uh, sort of in the insure tech world to go into insurance business uh, and it was a good time we started 2016 finally and it was where the first intro tech batches started we used an accelerator in the very beginning it was the very first intro tech breed so we are dinosaurs of this movement but it was exactly the perfect timing i think yeah so, you know, obviously, you know, MassUp is uh, sort of in the insure tech world. Can you tell our listeners what the product is and what problem you're trying to solve? MassUp is a so-called digital MGA, and we offer white-label insurance products. But that means we are not concentrating on technology, but you can get insurance products for any kind of PNC purposes, whatever, bike smartphone, private liability, et cetera. But the point is, as white label, we deliver it, including risk capacity, including pricing, underwriting, et cetera. So it's really done and you just have to put your label on it and sell it in your stores. And based on our technology, we can do that instantly. So you can sell tomorrow and really tomorrow if you want, uh, try something new. And uh, the third point is the global scale. So we started in Germany, but we had from the very beginning with our partners the approach to do it internationally. And so you can use it as well for international purposes directly as well. So the big point is we're solving that you can have a very flexible insurance product. And that's because we learned in the first years, we started as a technology idea with MassUp, as a software as a service that you can sell insurances online. And we saw we just pick insurances on the market. But we found out very early that the people were not happy because the products were not flexible. So if you want to use it for another channel and you want to have another deductible, you want to have maybe another rate, but different conditions, etc., the insurance programs were very static. The insurance programs are built to stay two, three, four, five years. And if you want to always a change on that insurance company says, yes, you can do, but it will take you a year. So, and that's where we always got problems because our clients wanted to do it differently. So that's why we then, together with our partners, decided to build own insurance products, but that are flexible. So uh, and that's a, a need until today. So we have it in Chile, the same product, for example, in three different stages with three different deductibles, tariffs, but based on the same product, what we can play out directly in different channels. So in these flexibility is one main differentiator for us. I mean, you spoke an uh, interesting point. You, you spoke about um, the evolution of your product uh, over the years. I mean, how have you as a team evolved it? So is there a specific process or framework that you've used? Yeah, it'll be interesting to find and uh, dive into that. Yeah, sure. We follow a uh, very certain uh, de uh, development stages that we developed in the agency over the years. There are some known methods. Yes, we did as well. The business canvas, et cetera. A lot of us expert talks. And it was a very good helpful. Uh, we started with an accelerator in Startup Bootcamp in London as well. So we used all the time to talk to experts to prove our business model. But we had certain development stages from sketching, from business modeling, and then over to a POC and uh, UX works out where we always had proof from external partners, external surveys, etc., and then developed the product further on. But the main topic was that we started as a technical solution. And that was really just to find out when we started business. We had very early first clients. Uh, they is used in German by banks and insurers, and they used the solution. We're happy with it. But like I said, we found out with the product that we had a product, and we couldn't just find that out in after one year in the market when we thought out, okay, that's a missing link. So that was really learned by practice in the market and to evaluate uh, the feedback from our customers, the feedback uh, what we saw in the market. So you have to go out and talk and get the feedback and then develop further. And that's a sign maybe of startups to learn then very fast and move on. Yeah, yeah evolve your product based off you know, your customers' needs right now. Yeah, correct. And it's, it's an overall changing all the time. So then we started with small products. Now, like smartphone, for example, because the customers were the need for this. Smartphone is a difficult product. We could solve it. But now we are evolving into more complex products, more global products. So there's a steady evolvement. But it's always around product. 
Uh, the technology is still there. It's state of the art. We enable our clients to use it. They replace some internal systems with it, but it's a enabling. Uh, our focus is really delivering a flexible wide label product, but more for more purposes. And we learned, that's a very interesting learning for us. We started in Germany. We saw that German is a great insurance market. We do it here. But when we started in London in the accelerator, we directly had an international approach. We talked to French people. We talked to a lot of other European countries. We talked to American people. And then we got a link to South America. So we learned in other regions, the insurance product uh, is not totally different, but it's another density, another penetration, and there's another need for these products and much more open markets. So we directly built our solution to be used globally with a global cloud platform, uh, with uh, global um, measurements for our product to adjust to a, a local market needs, etc. So that's something uh, that was really coming very from the beginning from the accelerator. That's an interesting point. I mean, market dynamics, different needs in different jurisdictions. I mean, you mentioned it was a global product uh, in the end, but did you have to cater for specific needs in, for example, Chile or uh, for in France or, or what have you? So slightly yeah. adapt your product for those customers. Exactly. And I have to mention at this point uh, that we have uh, one global partner. It's uh, Willis Ree. Uh, we've learned with them in the UK. Uh, they are partners, strategic partners for us now for years. And they help us for sure with getting capacity for our products, etc. But they help us as well with the global distribution of our products. So that's one big anchor for us. And now, based on that, we got really requests nearly from all over the world. So I just discussed to South American people, I just discussed to a lot of different Chinese, Asian markets, Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, etc. And we talk as well to markets like Arabia. So we have a really good overview <laughs> what you can do. And, and that's all based on PNC products. And you see for sure you have similarities in every market and our general solution can be used there, but you need adaptions. So some for regulation, different kind of products, some need an e-signature, what we don't even have in Germany, some need a different liability course and that. So an extra confirmation, et cetera. So it's always adjustments that will be learned over the last two years to the product. So the one side is, yes, we have one general framework that fits nearly most of the market, but every market needs at least a slight or bigger adjustment. So that was a big learning curve, very interesting. So if you talk to Japanese insurance colleagues, if you talk to Arabian colleagues, it's, you really have to get deep dive into culture as a German. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, really interesting. And besides the interesting, you have to do some work. Uh, it's not so directly use everything from Europe everywhere else. Yeah. But that's a big ride in the last few years. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I mean... You, you, I mean, you've briefly touched on it. Let's explore it a bit more. Some of the, the biggest obstacles that you've faced during this period and how have you learned from them to fuel your, your success now? Yeah, well, we're learning every day. It's far not in the end. So some learnings are like we expected and they're not due to the branch, uh, to the industry. So for example, insurance is not fast discussions about regulations, discussions about local insurers, reinsurers, etc., always take a lot of time. So and if you saw it in the beginning, we taught one or two years, but it can be easily discussing one year per, per market until you start and something. And anyhow, for sure, a pandemic doesn't help. So it's cost six months on top on that. So that's a very long lasting part. And especially in our case, because we are totally B2B focused. So we have first launched with partners in the local market. So you have to first to find them and then with them convince the local partners. So that's a long ride as B2B sales is. It's always like this. We knew it, but with the insurance obstacles, etc., that's maybe an extra portion of longevity. So that's, that's a big learning. The other learning is for sure culture expected as well, but you need adjustments there. You need a different regulation. Uh, some of our products can be directly used in markets. In other markets, they had to be filed extra words. There's a lot of more smaller learning and adjustment for each market, uh, what we had to tackle in the last two years. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. And I mean, let's you know take a couple of steps back. I mean, it sounds like obviously uh, you guys have got a good product. You've been partnered up with some great companies. But in the early days, what tactics did you use to create product awareness, and how has this evolved over the years? Okay, it's um, two things. The one thing is you do with some own stuff about LinkedIn, about accelerators. For us, it was a good hub, and the whole network around it afterwards. Uh, where you can have contacts, talk about partnerships, etc. That's a great help. And you have intensively work with your network, reach out to people, be behind it, etc. So that's a very big, big part as a very beginning. And the second part is for sure, some influencer, give your information to some certain people's intro tech and the insurance business is not so big, to, but you can be on the radar on, on several people with a few calls and hints. So that's the standard part. The other part is that we, in the investor partners, always reached out in the beginning for people who can deliver to our business. Every partner we have on board has a certain angle to drive our business. With is re I mentioned already as a big help for capacity and worldwide distribution. It's a, it's a great, great partner, great work. And to open many doors. We have a Hamden group that's a Lloyd's Market syndicate and partner over there, so it has direct access to some people that, that we use. So we have a media man with all the technical resources involved as well. We have a lot of fun and we have people who know very well the German and Berlin intertech scene, et cetera, where we have cooperation over that. So every of these partners has a direct delivery and need for our business. So, and it's a very good combination between us we can talk directly we talk very openly we talk very frequently it's not a simply take the money and let's see in a year what we have made of it but it's more a working relationship and that's on that level especially with the big companies like willis that's that's very special and that we worked on that but we selected it from the very beginning that we wanted to have that so that helps a lot because then you can use leverage these network as well and work with them together and grow the business. I mean, it's slightly diverse in here, but um, I think you touched on a, a great point, uh, working relationships. I mean, obviously, from a leadership perspective, you guys have had to make a call on, on the culture of the company. And that sounds uh, right off the bat that that's obviously meant you found great partners and uh, able to leverage different businesses and also different skills to start the scale-up process and maybe accelerate the scale-up process. Again, we were lucky that our roots are based in an agency. That is, like I said, we are working all over the world. So we have offices as well for development in China, in Munich, in Sofia, etc. So we are used to work in different networks, but helped us a lot in the pandemic as well. So we were used to this kind of work as well. We had already a built up that we are used to use different talent and different scalability methods. So that is a real advantage that you normally don't have if you have a fresh startup with five people. That was one big part. And yeah, the other point is you have to work on these relationships and really show that you involve the people, talk to them, get them really interested and get them on board that way. Yeah. And but the other part is you, you select. You know your business, you have a business idea and you select what it could be the right partner as an investor so it's not simply looking i uh, need to raise the one million and to find something but it's more which value do we need in the business and i think the mindset from us in the beginning was not we build an intro tech we get millions and then we go to rio or to bahamas or whatever we like with media man we try to start a new business that is sustainable and so we selected partners yes they brought in some money they shared the same business idea so and that depends on you, which approach you have in the beginning, but that was ours. Okay, and uh, you mentioned uh, some of your tactics to uh, create product awareness in the early days was using platforms such as uh, LinkedIn. So what type of activities or what type of things did you do on platforms such as LinkedIn, maybe Facebook and others to create that awareness? Besides many studies, <laughs> it's getting a bit more overwhelming. Um, but yes, LinkedIn is a good hub, um, but as well, the uh, the insurance platforms. So like Accelerators already mentioned, we have in Germany some built insurtech hubs. Um, so we can use these platforms, concentrated on conferences, selected approach, uh, very business 
business orientated, uh, what you can do without investing a lot of money. But it's more personal involvement, getting there, talk to the people, and many reach out to talk and, and use these networks and widen the network. So that's the more hub. And for sure, the other opportunities come by the partners that they say, hey, we are here on this conference, for example, in Singapore, where we important Asian markets. There's mm-hmm. every year a big conference is for insurers, reinsurers. You get invited to these guys, so use the business platforms that, that the partners deliver. That's, yeah, that's a lot part of the work as well. And this third hub is uh, for sure that we in each market we have to approach the local partner because we know the German market very well. Build that knowledge with people in Chile or Colombia that will take a lot of time and a lot of invest. So we are using uh, local partners that already have a network like we in Germany, where we trust in, uh, we invest in building the relationship with them and use their network as well to present and to sell the idea. So that's more a market approach, but it's also a hub to uh, share our awareness. Okay, cool. Uh, it totally makes sense. I mean, use different avenues to create that awareness, either digitally or obviously sort of the face-to-face general channels. I, I guess we've spoken about this in a way, but I'll ask you it anyway. There's obviously a, a process that you've gone through to make certain that uh, your product is ready and is also fitting exactly what your customers required. Is it a specific framework again? Is it a specific process or is it simply a case of uh, evolution that we spoke about early on to make certain that your product uh, fits the market needs? Well, we had a process for the start where we developed the uh, technology and then set different marks and just proved it against it for different milestones. So that's a classic, classic approach. And then for sure, we tried intensively to work with our first clients to work on the solution and what would you need as well? What would you need more? So that's more the standard approach. For sure, the other part is market research. Always look what's happening on the market. What is the next topic? What people are talking about? What they need? And that's a constant research from our side as well. Not for our own topics, but the whole industry. And the third approach is that we have steady review points with our partners. So there's uh, every two months, there's a steady review. Are we on the right track? What have we learned from last time? What is new development? And get the feedback. And you always have, like I mentioned before, that's an expert round. So these guys are insurance board members, insurance experts at all from different aspects of the industry. If you get them in a room and discuss with them very openly what you should take, then you get a much, much more valuable feedback than you can ever get from your own mind and own team. And these expert rounds then directly flew into what we develop in the next steps. So yeah, that's, that's mainly the main topics. Okay. And as you're building out a product, obviously we need to find our ideal customers. And it seems like you've had the accelerator, you've had the experts, you've also used some digital platforms. As a business, how are you changing the way you find your ideal customers? Has that evolved over the last five or so years? What's your view on that? It has evolved and it will evolve more. The first step was really just getting a first POC partners, like in Germany, et cetera. So the accelerator stage. Then we got Willis in and we did big roadshows internal the company and with their clients where they picked the clients and said, that's an interesting part of it. So when we got some great clients, some great feedback from that all over the world. So that was a big, big road trip. So the next step then was to find local partners that can build on these first steps and build further business on and to bring their clients on and bring their distribution on and build a distribution around our solution and products. So that is the third step. And for sure, once we learn more about the market, let's say one or two years, then we try and have to build own sales teams. So the, our next step will be to for sure widen up our sales organization from a small team using the partner's resources then to build it on their own. So that will be our next step. Right before the pandemic, we were in the first step to do that in Asia. Like I said, the Southeast Asian region in China is a great market for all kinds of products. And we already were about to start in Singapore and then uh, really had had to delay the plans. I hope we get back to that as soon as we are in a more stable 
conditions, but that would be a first step then to build small teams and then build a sales organization over there. So that was a clear, very, very clear path from us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, makes sense. And, you know, obviously you started and then been delayed uh, somewhat on building that sales team, but what challenges do you think you'll face with respect to uh, building up your sales pipeline in the next, uh, you know, sort of six to 12 months? Given that we have normal conditions, for sure we have everything what you have. You have to steer teams that are far away from your own hub. <laughs> so you have the topic. We have some experience with China, US, like I said before, but will be a new level on that. You have to hire people uh, that you don't have to sit next to you. So that's a topic. Who do you trust? Who do you build a team? Uh, how do you grow that? How do you find the right hats as a starting point? So these kind of HR problems that you always have with these stuff. So that will be a first step to trigger. Then again, how much time will it take? Like I said, B2B business is not easy in general. In insurance, it's especially not something that happens tomorrow. So we will need a lot of patience, I believe, to build it. And then for sure, we have always the point that we have competition in that field as well. So I think we have a quite unique position now with our products and technology. But for sure, if you look to China, what develops there, you have a lot of great competition so as well. So that will be something, a time race, that we get a first market approach and share to get a more stable situation in these countries. And that's getting together. B2B insurance taking time a lot and then being fast enough to be there in the market. So that's maybe one, one main challenge. And I mean, you've, you guys are obviously going through a scaling period or on the cusp of that uh, right now. And you've also mentioned the pandemic a few times in our chat today. What's your approach to growth in the next six to 12 months? And how are you going to make certain you sort of achieve these milestones considering there's a, um, are we in the midst of a pandemic? Well, the pandemic for sure for our kind of product was not a help. So you don't buy a whatever smartphone insurance. You have other problems here and those. So therefore, many projects or uh, sales were slowed down, very simply. But it used to time to build some um, other distribution partnerships. So we think we will be ready directly once uh, we are getting hopefully back to normal or more to normal. Nobody can say when that will be really, but that's our approach. And then to use that time. And yes, uh, we already were, like said, on the hub to invest in one or two key markets from us in Southeast Asia. That would be still our goal to prove it there, to build it there. And then for sure, it's a matter of money at one point. So as soon as we can prove a more stable approach and the times are more stable in that, we will probably uh, try to collect some more money simply to build this cell organization. So and to push it time-wise to get faster to more markets. Yeah. Depends a bit, a bit how long we are in this uh, flow. Yeah, it makes, makes complete sense. And, you know, what's the biggest tip you can give our listeners who are building or optimizing their, their sales pipeline right now? Well, the, the one thing I said already, you have the right partners on board. I think that's uh, something by all the mistakes we did, and we had some detours, etc. <laughs> so as you always have as a startup, uh, but that is really, um, I really like that. I'm proud of that, that we have these partners, and uh, that's a big, big help. We'll think of it in the beginning. Who do you want to involve? How do you get them connected? Um, and I think that can be a very stabilization point and a, and a building point as well. So that's one very important part. And the other point is for sure focus. When I can say from our learnings in the beginning, we started to do several things. Sometimes because we simply could do it technically, we had an advantage and we tried to build everything, but it was not needed from the very beginning. And we tried to do more products, et cetera, et cetera. But in the end, you need less and more clear proof points and then you can start in the end faster so that's not a new experience but i can say we experienced as well in the very beginning everything was new everything was bright and yeah we do it and we can do everything and with our powers in behind um, but i think a, a focus um, very clearly technical wise product wise and market wise is something that you should consider from the very beginning don't get tempted because some there's an opportunity there's something nearby maybe you can reach it oh you know a friend who can build it i said let's do it and so on don't do it yeah. stay with what you have stay with the focus here on your experienced advisors and board and investors that you hopefully have done and i think that's a very very clear path where you can make very clear decisions as well yeah if it worked out or not. 
Yeah, some, some really great advice. And listen, before we wrap up, how can people find and connect with you and, and your business? Well, the easiest is LinkedIn. I try to be polite and answer everything. So even if it's not fit, you can write me. <laughs> That's an easy point. Yeah, for sure. We have a website, messup.de. Um, so you can write me. But again, LinkedIn is the very simplest and easiest way. I see who say, who, everybody who writes me. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, listen, Fabian, thanks for joining the show today and, and really look forward to watching your business go from strength to strength in the next uh, few weeks, few months, and few years. That's been great uh, insights into what it takes to go from startup to getting a product out to, to various locations and really great insight and appreciate you taking the time today. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Hope there was some good advice that your listeners can use. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> lots of great advice. Thanks again and look forward to catching up soon.